Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so excited to be bringing you God's truth today. Praise God. Are you ready? Let's call for that daily bread. Now, 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 hear me. We can so believe God to supply your daily bread and it's going to be big enough for your whole environment. Praise God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when we talk about daily bread, don't just be thinking, give me food. Oh God, if I can just get food too. You know, it means everything I need to be happy today, I receive it. <laughs> now that's what it means. Whatever is going to give me joy today. You know, your, your daily bread could be the, the, the ticket money that you need to travel. Your daily bread is not just when I'm talking about food here. He's talking about my daily provision. Remember, David said, he daily loads us with benefits. Not benefits, benefits, plural. So don't, don't lock your mind to, to think we're asking for uh, daily bread. You no, know, someone will look at it and say, ah, it's not poor people that will be asking God for daily bread. No, come on now. We're talking about daily provision. Everything you require today. Maybe your house rent is due today. It's your daily bread. You get what I'm talking about. Everything you need to be happy today, that favor you require, it's your daily bread. So, so it's all encompassing. Now having this understanding, are you ready to release your faith with me right now? Even as we stand in agreement, say this with me, say, Father, today I demand my daily bread. And I believe I receive it right now in Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Yeah. Therefore, receive it and let it walk fully in every area of concern in your life. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Praise God. Turn your Bibles with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. I want to show you something there in line with what we've been talking about. We've been talking about how to walk in 2022. First Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 12. Now I want you to look at this. It says, Now we have received not the spirit of the world. We have received not the spirit of the world. Now this is telling you that there is the spirit of the world. There is the spirit of the world. But he says we did not receive that spirit. But what did we receive? He said, but the spirit which is of God. Now New King James said, who is of God? So we have received the spirit. But then the spirit is not the same one that is walking in the people of the world. But this spirit that we have received, it is the same spirit that is walking in God. And I'm like, shit, I told you yesterday that we are God's praise God. Yeah. So now we have received the same spirit. That same spirit that is walking in God is the same spirit we have received. Now, what does the spirit do in us? It says that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Did you see that? Ha! Ah, he says, there are things that have been freely given to us by God. Not the devil, not a man. There are things God has given to us and he gave them to us. How? Freely. That's the quality of our receiving. We received it freely. He gave it to us freely. So now he says, now we have received the spirit of God so that we will know those things that have been freely given to us. Now, how many of these things do you know? Think about it. Things that are freely given to you, how many of them do you know? Have you sat down? Now, this is 2022. Have you sat down to, to we are still in the early days of 2022. But have you sat down to think and ask yourself, okay, what are these things that have been freely given to me. He says, I have received the Spirit of God so that I will know. He didn't say, I already know. He says, so that I will know. Okay, so now what do I do? If I believe 
this statement that he made here that then I, that I have received the spirit so that I might know okay now I want to know so what I begin to fellowship with the Holy Spirit and say Lord talk to me about these three things I want to know them I want to know them now he he begins to Hali Brokoshia he, he begins to, you see, let me tell you something. There is nothing so good, there is nothing so great like walking in the truth. Ah, ah, ah. You know, the, the greatest challenge in people's life is this. They are deceived to walk in a lie. And the greatest benefits you can do for yourself and the greatest blessing that God can give to you is to cause you to walk in the truth. I'm telling you the truth. Now, listen. When you walk in a lie, so terrible, so terrible. When you walk in a lie, you are walking in the ways of death. Remember what the scripture says? There is a way that seems right to a man. But the end thereof are the ways of death. See, now that way that seems right to a man is a way of the is is is, is a lying way, or is a, is the is is that man have chosen to walk in a lie. Now, the moment you choose to walk in a lie, every result you get from that way that you have chosen leads to death. It leads to death. But now when you walk in the truth, now what does it mean walking in a lie, walking in the truth? I might say, you know, sometimes like, uh, um, what, what, what does walking in a lie mean? Well, it means if you're the one that did something in the acts, agree that you're the one that did it. Uh -huh, so then I know that you're telling the truth. That's not just what we're talking about. To walk, listen, to walk in a lie is, is, is this. To walk in a path that God didn't ordain for you. That's what it means to walk in a lie. To walk in a path that God didn't ordain for you. So what does it mean to walk in the truth? To walk in the truth simply means to walk in the path that God has ordained for you. Now guess what? If you are walking in the path that God has ordained for you, you will not even have to tell a lie. See? You will not have to tell a lie. Because all things you need there and all things given to you, they are yours. And you keep building and building and building. You will not have to come back to repair what you built. But when you walk in a lie, you will build and, and build on false pretense. And then one day you now say, hey, I'm happy. You looks like I'm doing well, but there's something I wish never goes wrong. It's like, you know, you're building a house. You're building a two-story building. And when you were working on the foundation, there was, there was something that went wrong in the foundation. And you saw it. But you look at it and say, ah, it means I have to go and spend money. And ah, you know what? Uh, let's just cover this thing and, and move on. And, and you cover it and you continue building and you continue building. Now the house may be looking nice from the top when completed. But do you know anytime you go to that house, you'll be troubled by that thought of that foundation. A strong wind should not just blow. Anytime there's a strong wind, you're scared. See? Now, why? Because you walked in a lie. And now these things keep tormenting you. So when he talks about the things that have been freely given to us of God, he tells you that it is by the Holy Spirit that you can recognize these things. So have you paused to ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, what are these things that have been freely given to me? I want to know. I want to know. Hey, can I help you out? Now listen, divine health is a free gift. Divine health is a free gift. You know that? A good marriage is a free gift. Now, your sustainers, just like we did at the, at the early part of this broadcast, asking God for our daily bread. You see, that daily bread is a free gift. You are not expected to work for it. You are not expected to fast and pray for it. It is God's own responsibility towards you. 
Anything you do to get that in terms of labor, to get that is wrong. These are things that belong to you simply because God commanded them over your life. These are things you receive because you belong to Jesus Christ. Because God is your father. David said in Psalm 121 verse 2, God gives blessings to his beloved in their sleep. Now, he didn't say God gives blessing to everybody. He said God gives blessing to his beloved. So you've got to be his beloved. See that? So when you are his beloved, there are certain things you should experience in your life. And you wake up to those things. But you see, if you don't know them, though they are there, you won't enjoy them. But he said that we have received the Spirit of God so that we will know these things. So I said, divine health is one. Divine provision is one. See, you shouldn't be thinking of food to eat. You shouldn't be thinking of bread. You shouldn't, you shouldn't think of such. And you know, sometimes I say, what are you going Ah. I have to go out now. Man has to make some money. Man has to, I didn't even say to make that statement. I have to get my daily bread. You know, we have to work now so that we can put food on, the, on our table. Now, that's a very wrong statement. Very wrong statement to me. It is not your job. Ah, le prados. Ke la basata ya. Oh, you know, sometimes when we talk like this, people just think, what are you trying to say? Are you trying to say that we should stop walking? Are you trying to say that we should not? Hey, get it. Get it. You remember Adam in the Garden of Eden. Now the Bible says God blessed them. And he gave them job to do. The Bible says he put the man, he put them in the garden to dress the garden. Right? Now, he now said to them, of every tree of this garden, you may freely eat. Notice. He put them in the garden. And then he said, hey guys, of every tree in this garden, you can freely eat. What does that tell you? That tells you that the tree were, were, were already there. The trees were already there. And they produced fruits after their kind. And they were good for eating. Praise God. And, and God was not saying that, look, you've got to dress this garden. And they say, you can freely eat of every tree. He wasn't doing, um, Adam, yes, how far have you walked today? Okay, now it's okay, now you can eat. Now remember, when they sinned against God, God now spoke and said, look, because of what you have done, now, you're going to till the ground and out of your sweat, you shall eat. So, if God is saying this is now what you're going to start experiencing from now, then you should ask yourself the question, so, what was it like before? No, talk to me. What was it like before? So, they, they made a mistake and God said, from now on, you're going to eat out of your sweat. So, if this is punishment for what I did. That means things are going to change around here. Then you should ask yourself the question, so what was it like before? I can tell you what it was like before. They were walking, they were not lazy. Adam and Eve were not just sleeping and waking up and waiting for time to go. When is God coming to visit? Okay, he's coming. Let's just wait. God comes and visit and they do praise and worship and God goes back and then they go and eat dinner. Come on now. Come on now. They had so much work to occupy themselves every day. But guess what? They were not doing it so that they would eat. They were doing it because it's their father's estate. And they were taking charge and taking care of their father's estate. Hey, that's what we've been called to do. Do you know that? That's what we've been called to. We've been called. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. But guess what? He has put us in charge of his estate. And what do we do? We make sure that the estate is aligning to his plans, to his purpose. Ah, Thank you, Holy Spirit. 
Are you getting these things at all? Because my time is up today, praise God. I, I just want to be sure you're getting these things. We've got work to do. Well, let's see how we'll talk about that tomorrow. Praise God. I love you so much. That's why I'm bringing all this truth to you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.